you walk in and then you walk to the toilet paper aisle and the grocery store I typically go to, it's pretty close to the front, so not much time of anticipation waiting. But you turn the corner and so many times, I turn the corner, nothing. And my instant response is cynicism. Oh, right? I'm cynical. Why? Because somebody overbought. <laughs> and I'm going to find them. And just a little bit of toilet paper. This is my hopeful jar. And this is my hopeless jar. And just a little bit of toilet paper. It's just a little bit, but like my hope waned a bit. Or like when my kids, oh, there was kind of like a lockdown for school, and I hoped it would only be two weeks, <laughs> but it wasn't. I hoped those masks would not be mandatory, but they weren't. And then I hoped my kids would listen, <laughs> but they didn't. And then I thought, things would go better, and I thought I'd see my friends, and I thought, and I thought, and I thought, and if we're not careful, just don't trip on it later, and I'm fine. What we have done, and it doesn't just, it's not just one moment, it's not just one piece of time, but if we're not careful, what happens is these little moments of our life leave us with an empty jar of hopefulness, and we wonder is things going to get better? And what we do is when something transfers, there's a withdrawal from being hopeful to hopeless. What we do is if we're not careful, we become cynical. I mean, some of the greatest comedians on the planet are the most cynical people on the planet. And you laugh at their jokes. I mean, some of the leading atheists in the world are comedians. Why? Because they're cynical. And we laugh at their jokes. And if we're not careful, this type of cynicism can rule our lives. We can become jaded, pessimistic, we question, will anything happen? We walk into a church service for the first time, and we hear about a man who rises from the dead. We see a story like Kate's, and we wonder, is that, is that what goes on? Can it be for me? I mean, if... We're honest and transparent with ourselves. I mean, we face this all the time. And what happens is it's not just one moment. It was moment after moment after moment that led us to withdraw from our hopeful jar. And if we're not careful, our hopeless jar, it fills up. And we mask our lack of hope with cynicism. I can't. It never works. It's not me. Everything is broken, and here's a big one. Where is God? What I find fascinating about the story of the Bible, throughout the whole Old and the New Testament, is people are wrestling with this question. I mean, throughout the history of God interacting with people, they've wrestled through this question, and no more so in the story of Easter. I mean, there's people that have been waiting for God to do something. I mean... The separation between the Old and the New Testament, we kind of, if you've ever read the Bible or if you've, you've learned a little bit about it, is about 400 years of God not saying anything. It's 400 years of silence. No prophet, no word. It seems like God is done. And the Israelite people, the Jewish people who followed God, were like, God, where are you in all of this? Not just that, but when we, find the story, when we find ourselves in the story of Easter, the Israelites are under Roman occupation. Now, we complain about taxes in Canada. That's for another day. We won't, I'm, not, I'm never going to address that here, okay? But we feel the taxation, right? You feel the taxation, but here's the deal. When, you when you're under Roman occupation, you have no choice. Democracy is not at work. It's just put on you. Your food gets taken. We read our Bibles through the Western lens and we go, oh, I guess this is, I guess they have, everyone has a cell phone and a TV and they drive from point A to point B. No, most of their stuff was taken and to make matters worse, it was their friends or people that were Jewish that were taking the taxes from them and taking a share for themselves. On top of all that, 
There's a religious system, and they hope beyond hope that God is going to show up there, but the religious system is intertwined with the Roman occupation, and it gets messy. And people, when we find the Jewish people are hopeless until a moment, and there's moments that happen in our lives, and there's moments that happen in the, Bi- in the story of the Bible. And here's why it's so important. It's because the story of Easter is one of hope. And we need to answer this question, how do we remain hopeful in a hopelessly broken world? When we feel like this is the common human experience, that it's less than more in terms of hope, how do we find hope in it? Well, all of a sudden, in the story of Easter, there's a guy named John that shows up. And he says, hey, I'm preparing a way. And hope begins again in the Israelite people. Jesus shows up. It all starts with a baptism. John baptizes like Kate got baptized today. Jesus is baptized by John. People are like, who is this guy? We know that there's somebody promised and it's a Messiah and then all of a sudden hope begins to rise when Jesus shows up at a wedding and he turns water to wine and people are like, what? And so hope begins to rise and people are healed and people are set free. Those that who are marginalized and those who are broken, Jesus seems to call them out, not in a bad way, but to say you are loved and you are seen. Even those who are cast outside of the city who are lepers, those that felt like they shouldn't walk through the doors of a church because they're going to be struck by lightning, Jesus was the one that pursued those type of people that shouldn't be here but are here. And if that's you today, welcome to Center Point Church because you belong here. Because that's the message of Jesus. And again, he begins to perform miracles like he raises a kid from the dead. And then we see him feeding thousands of people. And all of a sudden, hope begins to rise. Not just feeding them, but he brings wisdom. And he speaks with wisdom beyond his years. And hope has risen until the story of Easter. Hope is at an all-time high. Crowds are forming. People are celebrating. Hope is filled Again, and this is the story of Easter. But it's also a little bit different than that. Because Jesus is arrested. Jesus is put on trial for the murderer. And they choose the murderer over Jesus. And then he's walking through the streets with a cross on his back. He's whipped, and you're wondering, what all my hope, it seems to be going away. I thought he was going to rescue us. I thought he was going to save us. And then we find out that he's on a cross, or they find out he's on a cross. And then they find out that he's now in a tomb, and he's dead. And the hope that was there. was lost. You see, there was nobody outside the tomb that was counting down. There was nobody there. Nobody saw Jesus rise from the dead other than Romans who were guarding the tomb. You see, in the middle of Easter, the story when Jesus dies, hope is at an all-time low. And so you need to ask yourself this question, well then, what changed between Jesus' death and people choosing to give their life to follow him. And the story of Christianity, it's not built on a bunch of rules and regulations. The story of Easter is not, it doesn't just hinge on your good work. It doesn't hinge on a building. It doesn't hinge even on a group of people. It hinges on an event. The event that Jesus died, but that he didn't stay there. And because he didn't stay there, that God fulfilled his promise. And when things felt like the least amount of hope, when it felt like nothing else could go right, God was still at work. Like Kate said in her story, it felt like a fog. And maybe for you, that has been your story. 
that you feel like you have no right to be in a church. You feel like you have no right to pursue God. You might even have felt like hope has been lost. What's the point? But you got up this morning and you got to church. And I have good news that there is a God in heaven. We call him our heavenly father that sees your story and sees your life and sees what you're going through and sent an answer in the person of Jesus. And the story of Easter is that what seems dead actually can be brought back to life. And so that is what why people have chosen again to follow him. That when all things felt lost, what changed the game, what restored hope again, was an event. The event of Jesus' resurrection.